Hi, I'm Stephanie here with Shack Spindle Company. Today we're going to talk about spinning a thick and thin yarn used for hand weaving. I set up the ladybug spinning wheel with the bulky plier and flyer. The bulky plier and flyer has some advantages when you are spinning a thick and thin yarn. One advantage is it has sliding hooks that move along the arm of the flyer. It also has very large hooks here to guide your yarn through the very large orifice. The size of the yarn that you can spin on a spinning wheel when spinning a very bulky yarn is limited by the size of your orifice and hooks. So it is something to keep in mind when I'm going to spin something that is on the thicker side of yarn weight. I have it set up with a slow whirl and this is very nice for me because the ratio with the smaller drive wheel on my ladybug compared to my matchless slows down the flyer enough that I can introduce a very low twist which is required for a very bulky yarn. Today I'm going to be spinning Polworth silk from Sweet Georgia Yarn in a colorway dyed for Shack Spindle Company called Rocky Mountain Meadow. I have a project in mind and that is going to dictate how I divide up the braid. This is a four ounce braid and the first step is to unbraid the braid. Now that the braid is open, I'm going to fold the braid in half and match the colors. Once you know where the center point of the braid is, you can break it in half. Open the braid as they become compacted with dyeing and shipping. We will then split the braid at the center point, remembering that your hands have to be much further apart than the staple length. Now that the braid has been split in half, each half will be split into equal sections. Take the first half and begin to divide it in half again. Make sure that you go little by little, keeping as many of the fibers aligned as possible. Now I will take each of these halves and split them again. And I maintain all of the ends in the same orientation. So we know that all of the ends come from the same end of the braid. This helps maintain the fibers in the same direction that they were processed and aids in spinning later. When splitting the fibers, I don't like to start at the tips. I like to start down into the processed fiber where there may be a natural break and it feels like an even divide of the fiber and this will help you keep the fibers aligned. An easy trick to help me remember how I want to spin all these strips is to assess the way the fiber drafts most easily. I'm seeing that the fiber is pulling back more easily for drafting. And since this technique will require a backward draw, I would like to start spinning from this tip. Knowing that, I will find the other end of these four sections and tie a very loose knot. This helps me keep track if I leave the project and have to come back. I will be spinning from the same end each time by notating where the knots are. I am planning on a thick and thin yarn to be used in a variable dent reed on my rigid heddle loom to weave the river ripple scarf. I will be using six of the eight sections for the thick and thin yarn and the other two sections will be spun as a default. One of the most important pieces of information you have when spinning a thick and thin yarn is your staple length. 
To assess the staple length of your fiber, take the fat part of your hand and the bottom edge of your hand and place the tips of the fiber under the pressure of your thumb and pull. Give the fiber a simple tug and set it down. I will do this twice because we are looking for a common denominator. These look very similar, so that I know that my thick sections are going to be about two and a half inches. This is where many spinners will become uncomfortable because we will be drafting all the way out until it looks like your yarn is not going to stay together. This is the beauty of thick and thin yarn.